How are you guys? This is Eric from RuleTheWasteland.com. Debated even making this video for a few days simply because of one, how it might be perceived as some people by some people as taking advantage of a situation, and also simply because of the way the YouTube algorithm works. Anything of certain topics gets buried and not shown to anyone. But when it comes down to it, I've decided that, you know, I've been making videos on this channel for a decade long before monetization or anything like that or affiliate links was ever possible. So if you doubt my motives, really don't care, you can go watch something else. Also, there's just going to be a lot of people due to the recent events that are looking for this information. So to not put it out there, regardless of what you think anyone's motives are be, would be unhelpful to those people. And having this information here could genuinely help people. So I'm going to put it out there. So like I said, due to recent events, there's a lot of people right now who are searching for bulletproof backpacks or similar type things. The, there's a couple things that you should know about when it comes to choosing a bulletproof backpack or bulletproof protection for similar situations. And that is one, first of all, to look into whether you want to get a backpack with that ballistic material built in versus uh, removable material. And I have a, you know, a preference to that, which I'll explain later. And then also the distinction between ballistic material that protects against a lot of handgun rounds only, and then some that will actually defend against rifle rounds, specifically at least some of them. And due to these current events, most people are interested in getting the ones that have some rifle protection. And uh, I'll give you some information about that as well. So the first issue being the bulletproof backpacks that have built-in protection versus the ones that are removable like this Safe Life backpack panel that I've made a video on in the past. Um, my personal preference, and I'll explain why, is to not get the one that is built into the backpack for a couple reasons. First of all, it doesn't give you any choice as to the, the style, the size, the functionality of the backpack itself. And usually, you know, they're not necessarily the best backpacks, they're not the best looking, they might be extremely large or weird tactical looking if it's something that you're getting for a child to go to school with or something like that. And it just doesn't give you any optionality. The bulletproof protection is no greater in a bulletproof backpack when it's built in than it is if you buy the ballistic material separately. Most backpacks nowadays have this sort of, I don't even know if you can see it, this like panel here for the back. It's like a pocket almost. And you can just slide, these are, the, the Safe Life panels are designed to fit exactly in most normal size bag. And this is a fairly small backpack. It's about as small as a normal backpack would get. It slides right in the back. And even if you don't have this panel, it can still just, just lay in there. If you have books or whatever else in there, it might move around a little bit, but there's nothing that would prevent it from just leaning up against your backpack. So that's the main reason I recommend getting that. And you can also put it into any other sort of bag. You can put it in, you can take it out and put it under your shirt or something if you need to. Um, there's all sorts of other options you have with it at the backpack. A lot of times, you know, I've had, when I was in school, I loaded up my backpack with books and I've had the things tear off and everything like that. So obviously a backpack with the bulletproof, uh, ballistic material built in is going to be a lot more expensive than a normal backpack and it's going to be receiving the brunt of the wear. So when you have the panel just in your backpack, it's not getting any stress on it other than just the normal age and everything. But the backpack itself is always going to be the one that gets worn down. The actual straps, the zippers. So I mean if you buy a bulletproof backpack and the zipper goes out, then you have to buy a whole new backpack or get some sort of weird repair. And I just don't think that most of the companies that make these bulletproof backpacks put a lot of effort into specifically making the backpack itself that extraordinary. So you can get any backpack you want if you get the material separately. So that is my recommendation, is that you get the ballistic material separate from the backpack. Obviously there's no rule on this, but uh, the ones that are built in are not more bulletproof in any sense. It all depends on the threat level and you can get all that stuff separately and it's much more versatile. It's usually gonna be cheaper and gives you much more options as to the backpack itself or the bag of any kind. You can put a briefcase, you can put it in a messenger bag, even a large purse. So that versatility is huge and I, I recommend getting it separately. The next thing to consider is the protection level or the threat level as it's called. If you're not familiar with bulletproof or, or bulletproof um, materials, the A, if it has like 2A, 3A, that's pistol protection. And if it's just a number, three or four, then that includes rifle protection. So this flexible panel is uh, the Safe Life Defense backpack panel, which I've made a video on before. I'll, if I can find it, I'll put the link in the description. But uh, this is 3A plus 
And their plus is pretty much specific to safe light because it includes stab protection up to 36 joules of force, which most soft armor is not specifically rated against stabs. And then it also stops the FN57 and the Liberty Civil Defense 9mm, which are technically pistol rounds, but they're extremely high velocity and can defeat a lot of normal 3A armor. So that 3A plus, it gets indiscernibly thicker and heavier, you can't even tell, but it has that extra threat protection. But all the 3A from Safe Life has slash, uh, strike, taser protection, and stops all common handgun rounds up to 44 mag and even 12 gauge slugs, which I've done in the video before. It's pretty cool. And that's extremely lightweight, extremely flexible. This thing will slide in any bag and it'll be indiscernible to most people wearing it, even picking it up if they didn't know it's in there. The only downside of this and related to the incidents that have happened is that people want rifle protection and this does not stop rifle protection. The soft armor does not stop rifle protection from Safe Life or anyone else. And um, that's something that is can be a common threat these days is the 223 or the 556 five, round or maybe even 762. So if you want rifle protection, you're going to have to not only pay a little more, but you're going to have to go with something that's significantly heavier and significantly uh, less flexible usually. So normal, most normal rifle protection is always hard armor. In this case, it's a ceramic plate from Safe Life. This is actually level four when used in conjunction with the uh, soft armor panel. So this will actually stop 30-06 steel core multiple strikes. It weighs about six pounds. So still not that bad. You know, it's like having three quarters of a gallon of water in there. So definitely noticeable, definitely not flexible, but still sized very easily to slide into your backpack. I put this one in my backpack a lot of times when I go to play poker to slide it right in that pocket. And that way, it's still easy, super easy to carry. In the event of a, any incident in public, I can just throw it on this way for the front. If I expect to be fleeing, I can wear it like a normal backpack. And it gives me protection against all common rifle rounds up to 30 at six, which is extremely large hunting round that you're unlikely to, come, uh, to encounter in a self-defense scenario. But certainly the 5.56 or AR, common AR-15 round stops that multiple strikes. Now, when it comes to rifle protection plates, whether that be three or four, you're almost always gonna have to deal with some kind of hard armor, whether that's the ceramic, polymer, or steel. Steel, I certainly don't recommend for like the backpack scenario because it's very, very heavy. It is the cheapest and it's good with multiple strikes, but it's extremely heavy to the point it doesn't make any sense to have it in a backpack or work bag or certainly a kid's backpack or anything like that. And uh, so I just disregard the steel for the most part for this particular use. Now the polymer plates might be a good idea because they're extremely lightweight, but they're also usually very thick and they're much more expensive than a ceramic plate. So they're gonna be the lightest, but they also are going to be, um, like I said, very expensive and usually kind of puffy, but that's an option as well. Um, the other option, which I think Safe Life is the only one that has it that I know of, is the only real flexible soft armor that stops rifle rounds, and that's their frass plate, which is flexible rifle armor system. Technically, it still uses ceramics, but they're they're like a small ceramic tile, so the plate itself can still flex and move a little better, and it's lighter than like a, a full ceramic plate, so it's a good in-between. Also, again, they're not cheap. I'll put the link in the description, but it is one of the lighter rifle protection rounds. I'm sorry, rifle protection uh, panels or plates. Still, it's about the you know, same size as these, so it'll fit in all your normal backpacks and everything, and it does stop the 5.56 five, round. So that's one of, that's what you're gonna be looking for. And it doesn't have the same rigidity and like hard edges and stuff that the ceramic plate does, so it's better for the backpacks and work bags and things like that than a ceramic plate than just a fully ceramic plate, and it still has that rifle protection. A little bit lighter, softer, a little flexible, so those are good things to have in a backpack. But bottom line, when it comes down to it, like I said, I would recommend the backpack armor separate from the backpack. I wouldn't get it built in. Obviously you can if you think that there's a good reason for that, but I think it gives you a lot more flexibility as to what armor you're purchasing and what backpack you're purchasing, and they're usually all sized so that it's gonna work together. And then I recommend if you need the rifle protection, like I said, I would go with the ceramic, the polymer, or the frass. I wouldn't go with the steel plate and just for the weight. And um, there might be some schools or certain areas like an airplane or something like that where they're not gonna let you take a giant steel plate anyway, but they'll almost always allow you to take certainly the flexible or even the ceramic plate. 
And um, as of right now, it's still perfectly legal for anyone in the United States who's not a convicted felon to purchase and own body armor. There is, I think, one or two states where you have to, I think New Jersey or New Hampshire or something have a weird restriction about you have to buy it specifically from a, a, a dealer of some kind who has like a security license. But anyway, most states, and you can buy it online. Like I said, I'll put the link down there, but look around, find without what the best deal is. You don't have to use my link. I'm just putting this out there for informational purposes. But uh, for the most part, anywhere in the US, you're good to go. You can travel with it, you can own it. It's not very restricted at all right now, but I would definitely get it because who knows what crazy restrictions they're gonna come up with. But let me know if you guys have any questions. I have some knowledge about uh, bulletproof vests and such things from a previous job that I have, so I'm obviously not a super expert but no much, no much more than just a random average person on the subject. So let me know if that helped you guys. Hopefully it helps some, at least one person out there who's looking for this information. And uh, keep watching guys and I will talk to you later.